Hi everybody, this is Warren Herman. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about some ways that we can cope with our emotions and the sensations in our body that come from the challenges that we face. A lot of times we experience different feelings, different thoughts inside of ourselves. It's very difficult for us to be able to know what exactly to do about these experiences. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to think about the model of the human person that will allow us to understand how to relate to these experiences and also to briefly practice the use of some of these mental faculties so that we can be present to ourselves in a way that is healthy and healing. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin by thinking about the different skills that we're going to use and to understand how they're going to relate to the challenges that we're going to process. For example, maybe something that you face is a sense of fear or an experience of anxiety in the body, or maybe a feeling of, of, uh, of sadness or depression. Whatever it is that you experience, there's usually some type of sensations uh, in the body that come with it and some different thoughts in the mind. And so the resources that we have to be able to process these things are the various faculties of our minds. And our minds contain the ability to be paying attention to things, the ability to imagine things, the ability to think about things, to decide and to act, and to relate. And so these different aspects or faculties of the mind are things that we can draw upon in order to process those feelings and help them to, to heal and calm down. I'd like, as we begin this process, I'd like to offer you um, a helpful analogy that will show what we're going to do. You see, Everybody has seen a child um, when they are upset. Um, and a lot of times what has to be done is the child needs to be comforted, needs to be helped, and needs to be, have, have its, its experience known. But there's also a sense in which when the kid is being comforted, sometimes we might point at other things and redirect the kid's attention to something different. Our nervous system is, is basically the same. So whenever we have these experiences, we don't want to pretend the feeling isn't there and merely distract, nor do we want to get lost in the suffering, but we want to relate to the suffering in a way that cares for it and in a way that allows it, us to redirect toward neutral things, toward other things, toward things that will have, have an opposite effect as well. And so this balanced approach is what we're going to use in understanding our feelings and taking care of ourselves. So what I'd like you to do I'd like us to take a little bit of a tour of how we can do this. So we're going to begin in a way because it's very important to be able to focus the mind when we're calm. This lays the foundation for being able to focus the mind when we're upset. It's almost like lifting weights. Like we don't start by doing some horrible task that's extremely difficult for the body. We start by building ourselves up to be able to perform the task in the same way Practicing the use of our faculties when we are calm is the foundation. It builds up that muscle, so to speak, for when we have to lift the heavy weights of our disturbing emotions. So it's very important that you take time each day, and I'd like you to use this recording or some or other recordings that you might find that are healthy and beneficial to be able to practice the use of your mental faculties and to do that in a healthy way. So what we're going to do is we are going to, um, and also it's important to remember that when we are using our mind, there are also ways that you may be wanting to, um, to reach out and to use these faculties in a way that is in harmony with your faith. And so it's important to understand that this model of the person is one that you can use that is in harmony with, with an understanding of the person that honors a faith-based perspective. So what we're going to do is as we go through, I'm going to show you how to integrate this in some ways as we begin and as we explore this experience. So let's begin. We're going to begin by training the faculty of attention. And we're going to move on to imagination, onto the mind, the heart, and so on and so forth. So let's begin by simply while you, wherever you are, I want you to begin to notice the different sense perceptions that are around you. If you're listening to this recording, obviously you're going to be hearing my voice. You're going to be 
experiencing the sounds that are in the environment. Depending on how good the recording is, you might be hearing some birds chirping or something like that. But in the environment where you are, I'd like you to take a moment to just open up that sense of hearing and to really begin to notice what things sound like around you. I don't want you to judge the sounds or strain to hear them, just to perceive whatever there is in your environment. And now I'd like you to begin to notice maybe the sensation of your feet inside your shoes. I want you to see if you can find your big toe on your right foot. And notice your big toe, maybe sensing how it's in touch with your shoe or your sock. And now maybe moving to your little toe on the same foot. Sensing what it's doing. Now, if you're interested in using a faith-based perspective, we can remember that every experience is, in a sense, given to us by God. Every experience is intended. Every experience is provided. And so, in a way, when we are receiving these things, we can, of course, engage with them in a kind of a natural way calming ourselves by focusing on them, but we also can relate to them in a spiritual way, receiving them as gifts, or reflecting on what they might mean about our relationship with God. So I'd like you to now begin to just notice your other foot and begin to experience the sensations of that foot. Just noticing what it feels like inside your shoe or on the ground and allowing yourself to experience that. Now I'd like you to notice your breath. You don't need to try to breathe deep or do anything strange to your breath. Just notice it. And I want you just to notice the breath coming into the nostrils. And you can say to yourself to focus your mind, to begin to use your intellect to focus. And say, breathing in, I know I'm breathing in. Just notice your breath coming in as you say that to yourself. And you can say, breathing out, I know that I'm breathing out. Breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out. I know that I'm breathing out. Your attention and your intellect are both being activated. Breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I'm breathing out. If it's helpful, you can almost use one of your hands to kind of open and close. This is a way of using your will, your ability to take action as well. You can, you can kind of, as you breathe in, you can kind of open up your hands. You're breathing in. I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out. I know that I'm breathing out. And close the hand. Breathing in. I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I'm breathing out. So you can see now the intellect and the will are engaged in life, are engaged with our attention and engaged with the experience of life. And this is very different, you guys. We go through the day, a lot of times our mind is in a kind of passive state where we're, we're kind of ruminating about different worries and different concerns. This is about moving our mind into an active way of being in the world so that as you go through the day, not only when you're practicing an exercise, there's things that you would do with your mind in order to more deeply relate to your life. And especially if you're coming at this from a faith perspective, you relate to God as well through the experience of your daily life. 
So what I'd like you to do now is to again begin to practice with me and begin to breathe in. So I said breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. And you can open the hand too and keep your will involved. And now I want to say breathing out, I smile at God. I want you to just take a slight half smile. Breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I smile at God. Breathe again, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I smile at God. Breathing in, I know that I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I smile at God. So as you can see, this is a way of being with yourself, with God. There's many different prayers you could use. You could say, breathing out, I thank God. Breathing out, you know, whatever, whatever you want to say to God, you could say. But as you can see, all the different faculties of the mind are being engaged in a way that focuses them and makes them active so that our brain is not on autopilot, but is actively engaged with life in a way that's not strenuous, but it's not in a way that's um, slack either. So, how does this apply to how we would deal with our emotions? Let's say there's a sensation in your body that's emotionally disturbing or there's some type of a distress or a tension inside of you. You could say, breathing in, I know that I am tense. Breathing out, I smile at my tension. It's all about accompanying ourselves and caring for ourselves, being present to those pains. Because so many things in our life are a result of we, try, we, we, have, we have to race off to do something, to use some, so to maybe either, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a substance, but it's to do something, to scroll on our phones, do something to try to numb or distract our feeling. But if we can be with the feeling directly, that enables us to care for it and to really deal with it at the root so that we can really heal those places in ourselves that, um, you know, that need that attention. And so I want you to say with me, if there's some area in your body that's tense or maybe just as a demonstration, just kind of say, breathe again, I know my body is tense. Breathing out, I am here with the discomfort. And just sense into the texture and feel of that uncomfortable place in your body. And just experience it. Being with it like it's somebody you care about. Being present to it like it's somebody that matters in your life. Because it does matter. In a sense, this is the child in ourselves and we are caring for it. Breathing in. I know that I am tense. Breathing out, I smile at it. And now we can pray with it as well, using the, uh, bringing in our faith. We can say, breathing in, I am here with my feeling. Breathing out, you, God, are aware of my feeling as well. Breathing in, I am here with the tension. Breathing out, you, God, are aware of it as well. If your faith, if you are at a place in your faith where you really can have that openness to Christ, you can also you, you think about things that he experienced in his life and relate them to your experiences. So if you have a headache, you might think about him being crowned with thorns around the time of his crucifixion. And use the experience that you have as a way of relating to Christ. The whole thing is that we want to move into a, a way of moving through the world that has a sense in which Every experience we have is a way of relating to God. And that as you go through the day, 
you have an active experience of life rather than the mind being on autopilot. Remember, it's not all about that you have to be frantically active with your mind and focusing on things. It's this balance of you can see this receptivity to the breath, this relaxing, receptive mode of being is also active. It's not just scrolling on your phone. You can see that difference. And producing thoughts like noticing, oh, I see my breath, that's good. That's a productive, and making sure that these things are in a relational manner. Because whether we have faith or not, what really matters are the relationships that we have with ourselves and others, especially when it comes to our, our mental health and our healing. So it's very important that as you engage with these practices, you keep that relational understanding. And it's, it can be very helpful to bring your faith into this picture so that relational understanding can be as deep as possible and that you could be drawing most deeply upon the resources for healing that are available to you. So I hope that this video shows you these simple ways. You could, as you can see, whether we're relaxed or whether we're dealing with a sensation that's unpleasant, we're using our attention, noticing our breath, for example, using our intellect, saying, I know I'm breathing in, maybe using our will, such as moving our hand to track with it, or if we had an emotion that was painful to place our hand on it. Or that you can see these ingredients and then saying something to God, saying something to Jesus. There's these elements that enable us to use the, all the parts of our faculties in order to care for our, our conscience and our passions and our, our impulses. Because sometimes we might be judging ourselves too much. Sometimes we might be nervous. When we use these other faculties to care for our minds and our heart, then we can find a way of going through the world that is helpful and healing. And so I hope this video has been helpful to you in seeing some practices that can help you go through life in a way that is healthy and can lead you to really grow and find that relationship, um, both with, with, with that, that way of going through your, through your life in a way that is um, conscious, deliberate, and fulfilling. And meaningful. I hope this helps you as you uh, move forward in your life and your journey of healing and growth. Thank you.